Oh, do you ever have that moment where like you're brushing your hair and you realize you haven't properly like brushed your hair in like the past couple of days? Well, that was me at the beginning of this video. I was brushing my hair and I was like, oh my god, why is this so hard? Because well, I didn't brush my hair properly in like a couple of days. <laughs> welcome weirdos and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe. I didn't put up a video last week because I was just really exhausted. Um, and I didn't have like a video ready. I should have had video ready, but I, I didn't. I have stuff that's filmed. It was the end of one month transitioning to another. So those are always like chaotic and I'm still getting in the groove of like back to school and everything. So anyway, today is my September wrap up. Uh, September was a stressful month. I've been dealing with professors who assign me projects, which isn't a problem on like the large scale, but um, it's a problem when they do not um, explain what the project is and how to effectively do things for the project. So it was very, very hectic um, past couple of weeks. Yeah, and I've just been really bad at managing my time because Squid Game came out and um, whoop, lost a ton of time to that. Anyway, so let's get to the books that I read in September. So I read eight books in September, so I didn't make my like 10 book a week, a 10 book a month goal, but you know what? That's okay. It's, it's a loose goal anyway. It's just a general marker that I like to hit like on average. For like the past couple of months, I've either been exactly at 10 or I've like just been over 10. So you know what? It's okay. It's not a big deal. There are worse things. <laughs> let's get to talking about the actual books that I read. So the first book that I read is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, or at least I should say that I have finished. There it is. This is translated and it is by Stieg Larsson. I knew nothing. Um, I knew nothing going into this book and uh, I found it to be very like surprising and like all twisty turny. There's only almost there was almost too many characters to like keep track of, but that's okay. Like I did not expect this book to go the places it went and I was just sitting there like holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Uh -huh! Um I do have the next two books in the series, so I will be getting to them eventually. I had my parents ship it to me cuz I didn't bring them with me originally in all the books that I brought with me to school. Did I enjoy this? Yes. So we'll see how I feel about like the series as like a whole. I really, really liked it. I just, just wasn't expecting like much of anything and I was just surprised and it was all very twisty, twisty, turny and um, yeah, it's good shit. The next book is After the Last Border. Um, I read this with audiobook and following along and I can't really tell you much more about it because I read it for the booktube prize. That book is coming out next week. Um, yeah, it's supposed to come out last week, but um, you know what? I didn't have my shit together last week. That's what happened. Uh, the next book <laughs> is China Mountain Zhang. This is by Maureen McHugh. Uh, this I read with my eyeballs. I loved it. This is a book that um, the Storygraph recommended to me and I knew it was sci-fi and it was like queer. So the conceit of this book is that um, the CCP, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, have kind of like taken over um, but also don't think too hard about it um, in terms of like the actual like logistics of how that happened. But basically communism is in capitalism is out um all over the world and you follow this main character um whose uh, name is Zhang um at least that's his family name um his first name translates to like China Mountain that's why it's China Mountain Zhang um uh, anyway I really love this I thought there was like a bunch of like small like um details in this that like didn't need like to be in this um especially like pertaining to like you know Chinese culture that I really really liked. I can't really talk about like the actual like representation in this book because um, I'm not Chinese <laughs> obviously but there was lots of like uh, uses of like the Chinese language in this that like don't necessarily get translated. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it really depends on like the actual saying and how much in like the common place is or just how well known like that particular Chinese phrase is. 
Um, so some of the stuff I did need help like translating, some of it didn't. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, main character, um, Zhang, he is queer, he is, he's gay, and he's dealing with that. And there was just shit that happened with him where I was like, oh my god, what? Yeah, it made me very sad. This isn't a plot heavy book, it's very much a character study. You follow a couple other people. Um, mainly you follow this other person who's like on the Mars. Um, and so there's like a couple, um, a couple people that you follow, but you mainly follow, um, Shang. And, um, yeah, I really, really love this. Like, this is like, after I read this, I was reading this and, um, I was, I want, I want to know about like more about Maureen McHugh because this I believe is her debut novel and she's actually a white lady as well. Um, it seems to imply that she had studied in China because she says in the afterward, um, uh, I studied under, and she's referring to like the um, uh, politics of it. Um, so she's like the stu system I studied under both in the US and in China, but like there really isn't a lot like more information. Um, and I was like looking her up because I was like, how did she come up with this idea? Like, how does she know these things? Because there's just a lot of like details in this that are just so specific to like, um, like China in general, just general Chinese culture that I wasn't expecting to be in this book, especially since it was like written by a white lady. Um, so I just, I just want to sit down with her and like pick her brain about it because I love this so much. Moving on, because I, I could, I can just put this book down. Goddamn, that was a good one. Um, all right, the next book I read is Red Comet by Heather Clark. And I can't talk about that one either because um, book two prize next week, I promise, guys. The next book that I finished is Tender, <laughs> Tender is the Flesh. This is by Agostina uh, Bazerga. This is also translated been so many translated this month. This is translated from Spanish originally. This book, holy shit, it's intense. Oh my god. Conceit of this book is that there was a pandemic of some sort that made, that went through all of the animals and basically made them really really infectious and not good for humans. So like if you got bitten by an animal or scratched by an animal um, or you ate meat, um, there's lots of like conspiracies go into this book behind it um as to like what was the cause of this disease so that's explored a little bit but it's not really focused on a whole ton so basically what humans have to do is they have to resort to eating uh other humans basically um and and, and the um vegan vegetarian um and pescatarian in me so i am pescatarian uh full disclosure that is what i am so i don't eat meat Part of me is like, you couldn't, you couldn't find protein through other sources, but whatever, you kind of have to shut that part of your brain off to enjoy this book. And I fucking loved it. I loved how fucking twisted and disgusting this was. Yeah, it's, if you have a squeamish stomach, mm -mm, do not, do not read this because you get very like graphic depictions of um, slaughtering plants that slaughter humans. Um, yeah, I loved like the world and the steaminess and the grossness that was able to create like so basically all the kind of like gross things that like happen nowadays in terms of like human trafficking and stuff like that that still happens in this except now there's a whole like food element component in it as well and it's disgusting and um yes i loved it this is everything i wanted it to be and i'm so glad that i bought this and i read this uh, will i be reading it again anytime soon fuck no because it's it's a lot it's a lot um i will say about this ending no spoilers um it did not i did not see that coming um i was expecting shit to go to shit and like real bad um but jesus fucking christ <laughs> all right um yeah i if you want something disgusting and gross this is a good one for you next book is you know i'm i'm realizing as like i'm going through the books that like I read and once I'm still to talk about, I have pretty awesome like reading month this month, even though I read so few. Um, anyway, let's continue. Next book is, I did it. I did it. I bit the bullet. I read Becoming by Michelle Obama. 
it is every bit as fucking good as people say it is. Just Michelle Obama, she just she narrates in the audiobook too, and she just she's so good in this, and I just I love learning more about her and hearing her insights and her perspective on things, even though I didn't always like agree with her like 100% of the time. Like, it was so good. This book, I cried. I cried. I almost cried this one time, but I have a rule about like not crying in public settings slash in front of my students. The, the first part where I almost cried was when she was talking about like gun violence in Chicago and particularly the young woman who was in the marching band um who died that gun violence is like oh my god i have oh gun violence uh it's a lot it's kind of like triggering for me but that just mm, the way michelle was able to speak about it and the nuances she brought to that conversation and oh so good um and the part where i actually did cry um i was sitting and i was doing homework um i was doing math homework and um i was just sitting there and I was like, God fucking damn it, Michelle. I just tear, tear. It was, this was so good, God damn it. <sighs> um, and that was a part where Michelle Obama specifically talked about like how meaningful Hamilton is not only be beyond the fact that it is um, part of the story, the origin of America, but what it means as a person of color to see yourself and see that representation representation like on the stage how impactful and how meaningful that was um for her and you know Hamilton mm, I have so many feelings about Hamilton I love Hamilton um so much um the the musical and Luma Marmoranda just so much and like oh, it just I cried I cried I cried I cried god damn it um, yeah so read it need I say more that shit was good all right, the next one I read is Stronger Than a Bronze Dragon. This is by Amy Fan. This was also recommended to me by the Storygraph, and um, I, I really liked it. It felt, um, I obviously wasn't in the age demographic. I think this is very like YA, and it skews that way in terms of like the story structure and like the non-complicatedness of it. But like, I still loved it. It, it. it was still like so cool to enter into this world of like, pseudo Chinese like mythology and like culture and diving in and learning about like um, all this different stuff and it doesn't feel the need to like hand hold you through the explanations of like Li Gui and stuff like that and yeah you just you have this amazing badass character main character she gives zero craps she's just like I am going to protect my people and save my people and do whatever I can to do that and um she was awesome. What was her name? Anle. Yeah, Anle. She's so great. Um, and so she basically what's happening is her town is getting like attacked by Li Gui, which is essentially ghosts. This is a simplification, but for the sake of purposes of right now and explaining what's happening in the plot, we're just gonna say the Li Gui are ghosts. So her home, her village is being attacked by all these Li Gui and got to the point where like the women are like the only defenders. Um, and then this powerful like viceroy comes in to say like hey i'm gonna save your city but you have to give me this magical item um this pearl and also i'm gonna take one of the young girls here to marry um and become one of my consorts in my you know viceroy d kingdom thing <laughs> i don't know what to call it and Anle, the main character is chosen to become um this person's wife um and shit happens there is a romance that is developed I don't want to spoil anything about the romance not that I think it's like it's you definitely see it coming a mile away um and it's and yeah I, I enjoyed it I thought it was like a great building up of like their relationship over time and it didn't feel like unnecessary and there was so much shit that like was revealed I, I just this is good. I really liked it. I really, really liked it. This is a very like good thing for like um, like middle grade to like high school, high schoolers. That's what I would say. Like that's the kind of energy this book gives off. I still really, really liked it. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, and the last video, <laughs> well, not not video. This is a video. You're watching a video. Um, the last book I read is actually like, The Bleachers by John Grisham. 
this is a weird book. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it either. I felt kind of meh about it. So I think I'm probably going to give this around like a three star or something like that. It's very heavy in like Americana and Americana like imagery and stuff like that. And you know, what? I'm just going to put up a picture of it because I don't want to keep holding this book like this. <laughs> yeah. And it's super like concentrated on like football. So basically kind of what happens is um, this old football coach in this you know, small town is on his deathbed. So you have all of these players that he has coached all come back to like their hometown to reminisce about like their relationship with the coach, their experiences playing football. Um, I have no like visceral connection to football. Um, I don't give a shit about football. Honestly, I could, I could care less. Actually, I do. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, like not at all. Yeah, I just, it, it felt weird. I'm probably going to donate the book um, because I think someone else will like appreciate it a lot more than I personally do at this point. I don't want to say it's bad. I have a few other John Christian books that I've brought with me that I do want to get to at some point. Um, but yeah, they're all just kind of like in the same vein. Like I, I'm not super interested. It's not really like my genre and I, I really struggle to like pin down exactly like what the genre is. Yeah, I thought there was going to be like more intrigue, more like uh, like a conspiracy or um, some sort of mystery that is like unraveled. That's what I was expecting going into the bleachers and that's like not what I got. Yeah, <laughs> that is um, that is my feelings. So there you go. That is the video. Um, I overall am very pleased with how my month went because I just I love so many of the books that I was reading. Uh, let me know what was it, your favorite book that you read this month. Yeah, drop that in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know your feelings. Um, I feel super like positive and chipper today, way more than I've been feeling like a lot lately in my videos, which I think is a good thing. <laughs> um, all right, bye. I don't really know why that is, um, but I, I just feel really good. Um, all right. Bye. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day.